Ladies and gentlemen, I don't normally do this, but I am going to start the show due to the guests that we have in the building today with one of my most treasured sound effects. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I should explain. I was, this I was is like waiting for a studio audience <laughs> to start clapping there. Hey, there we go. Wow, this is like a this is like a real show. You guys have sound effects. You got a plant in the corner. Are you feeling regret about coming here to participate today? No, I feel regret that I I didn't go out and vote yet. You just didn't. For the simple fact that I'm going to stand in some long fucking line. Every, Mine, I had no line. Yeah. Well, because you did it during banker hours, you know, or whatever, oh. during comedian hours. I just got off a fucking plane, so now I'm, I'm oh. just stand down there with people with strollers and stuff. It's going to be awful. You know, by the time this comes out. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, I don't know. Who are you might calling? Be, Who do you think? I think it's going to be Obama. You think so? Yeah. I think Mitt. You do? I think Mitt's going to win. I think because that's what people do. They just go like, oh, this guy didn't work. Right. Let's go over to this guy, and then it, he's going to be in there, and it just it just keeps going back and forth. But they all work for the same dude. So well, we just covered our bases. One of us is going to be right. Yeah, there and you that go. is guaranteed. So there's a feeling of levity in the room right now. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, I was asking because I've never heard your podcast. I only know that you set up a malicious lie that I'm from Sacramento on there. That's true. Mm, yeah. You use the expression hella, <laughs> so you're definitely from Northern California. Well, not Sacramento, boo boo. Not Sacramento. Where are you from, Fresno? Oh my God, this is starting so crazy. San Jose. Shots fired. I need a shots fired sound effect. Um, yeah, I'm from San Jose. You are? No, I'm okay. from Oakland. I like how you like you like like that's better. It is better than Sacramento. Is Sacramento. It? What do they have? I want to say the governor, the king, a nice capital building. I guess that's cool if you're into politics. Yeah, but I know nothing. It's I nice literally I see. vote off of vibes. Oh, I haven't I haven't I haven't watched anything. I didn't watch one debate. I mean, you see Obama, no. he didn't even really want to be there. I didn't even I didn't see any of it. I, I can't, the I can't watch it. They give me it gives me like I get uncomfortable when they <laughs> when they do those stupid applause break lines and everybody buys into it. Yeah. Like, you know, I'll tell you, if you don't want this country to work, you're going to vote for that other guy. And everybody, hey, they all are just, there's always something corny. See, I would think you I would get, love it. I it's so, to me, it's like, I know nothing about politics, but I just love watching two men try to alpha each other and watching every moment of that, just every flicker in their face of like, uh oh, or like, yeah. Just, you see that? I see, yeah. I see two guys who would never get picked in gym class. I don't see anything <laughs> but then you're, alpha. you're a big jock. But, That's oh, your no, thing. No, but the last thing, I'm not a big jock. The, <laughs> the last one that I really watched, I watched the uh, Al Gore was the last one I watched when he did that, my turn. And he like oh. sort of like yelled in Bush's face and yeah. Bush did like, what the fuck? They gave him that look. Yeah, that uh, didn't work for him, but this time it seemed like yelling and cutting people off was working for people. Yeah, I can't, I can't He was, that. you know, he's always been a, what do you call it? Trailblazer. There you go. Who is? Gore. Oh, he has He's been? one of the greats. I don't, I don't know. I don't he's know the first one who knew about global warming. He, he discovered global warming. You no, know, it was the internet, wasn't it? You know, he made money off of global warming, just like those people making money off that pink stuff, right, in October. <laughs> when we're all supposed to be aware of something that we're all aware of already. I don't even breast, know breast cancer, history. Oh. Breast cancer awareness. That's what pink stuff is, is breast cancer? Yeah, if you, if you wear that, that means that you're aware. Oh, right, right. Breast cancer isn't sneaking up on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <-oh. laughs> don't have a ribbon on my person. We'll go looking for no, them. No, it's beyond that. Like, I was, at a, I was just in a casino, and they had on the blackjack table, they had a pink felt. Oh, yeah. Those are the people who truly care about women. Uh, and who truly give a <laughs> shit about anything other than the next yeah. fucking card being dealt to them. They're the ones to appeal to. But so my, this is all tangential, us just talking about politics. But I was asking Bill only seconds ago, before the record button was pressed, if he listens to other podcasts. Because I, I rarely do. Um, 
I've I have listened don't, I don't to. Have, I don't have time. And then also, I just don't like, because it's all so many comedians. It's same like watching their acts. I don't want what they're saying right. in my head. Right. Somebody sent me a link today uh, about a George Carlin link mm-hmm. about um, his thoughts on like voting and that type of thing. And I actually watched it and it was, just, it was, it was fucking devastating. Why? He's, he's just so fucking good. Oh, he's really? so good. He's just so good. Hmm. It's just being, even the way he uses his voice, brings it up, brings it back down. When, I do that. I do that. He, oh, yeah. You're amazing. At it. <laughs> but I mean, you're a natural. So for me, it's always been work. Him, <laughs> yeah. He's, he's, yeah he's just, I go loud. I go soft. I do that. Yeah. So that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> what just happened there? I'm just, yeah, I just want to, you, you know, affirm that I'm, I'm one of the top comedians in the country. I think you um, are. No, I'm just As kidding. far as like, you know, feature acts out there, <laughs> you really bring in a lot of heat on those headliners. Oh, God, this is hurtful already. Take it back. Take it back. Okay, I take it back. That was easy. I started, have you read Carlin's um, autobiography? Mm-mm. Started reading it. What am I reading right now? I'm reading this thing, uh, Live to Eat. No, eat to live. <laughs> eat to live. live to eat is for fat people. Oh, is that what it is? Or eat to live. Live no, to, to eat, eat is like, oh, I live to eat. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Give me another piece of cake. <laughs> no, this is eat to live. It's telling me I'm supposed to basically eat like a gorilla. Oh, uh, which is this, what? Because they're still jacked. Well, they eat like mostly vegetables and fruit. They can like right. pick up like a fucking armored car and throw it across the street. Yeah, that's so, the dream. So you're really not supposed to like, you know, I guess eat as much meat as I am. Like, I swear to God, like if you saw what I did over the weekend, just oh my God. thrown down my throat. Just yeah. like 9,000 beers. That's comforting to me. Cigars. Because it was awful. I don't know what I did. It's terrible. I've been on a rampage, like just eating pie. I had pie last night with Brendan Walsh at like one in the morning. We went to House of Pies, something like that. And then I woke up, texted him that and place said, sucks. I know the it's pie dirty actually does. And there's a bunch of old people in there. I know they had a fresh peach one that I had that was pretty good. They heated it up. Nobody knows how to make a pie. I know. Except, hey, except, you know what? Except, yeah, your, your mom, your mom, your grandmother. <laughs> Nobody can, can uh, it, once you go out in a the store, they can't make pies, they can't make fucking oatmeal, and they can't make macaroni and cheese. And the waitress cannot get the toast because they're responsible for the toast. Yes. They can't get it to time out with the heat of your eggs. No, you're, like when the eggs come every, out. You're, you're one of the greats. You're one of the top <laughs> comedians in the country. What you're saying right now, it's like there if there was a church where people said these kinds of things, I guess that's what stand up is. I can never tell with you whether you're agreeing I'm being with serious. me or if you're shitting on me. <laughs> it's like, you know, she's like a great pitcher where it just the motion is the exact same. You don't know is it the curve, is it a cut fastball? I have no idea. That I'm just going to so I'm just going to go with that you're going to be mildly mocking me the entire time that I'm no, here. No, I am 100% being earnest. Ernest. With your ironic fern in the fucking corner. This is we not get it. my it's building. It's a talk show. This is not my Jesus building. Jesus Christ. That's definitely that's very not a hipstery, fern. by the way. That isn't a Which, fern. That's very hipstery. You got to talk to this guy right here, Dustin. This that's is his. very like, yeah, like they did it with the Dick Cavett thing, the fucking lime green wind No one's watching here. this. It's just to, you know, keep oxygen in here or something. I don't know. I'm no, making this up. But listen, not mocking you at all. This I can't control that no one ever thinks I'm being earnest. Like if I do a show, sometimes I try to go like, thank you guys for coming out. It always sounds like. You probably get a laugh or you, yeah. you put people off. Yeah. Like I get like no one ever thinks because I'm being Because you probably. Genuine. Do it the way you do your all your shit. Just be like, yeah, it's great to be yeah, here. Yeah. Okay, because you because you're uncomfortable with actually putting out some sort of nice feeling. So I that's know. what happens. It's but you. I feel it. I do feel it. But it's very hard for me to express. Do you cry it. when you're by yourself sometimes? all the time. Yeah, yeah. You do, do you? that so you can't let it out. Do you? Do I? I only cry if something bad happens to animals. But I find tragic stuff happening to people disturbingly hilarious. <laughs> More times than I should. Like, I watched the beginning of that movie, Precious, and I was laughing my my ass off. Not because you should do that to somebody, but it was just, it was funny. It's like, yeah. Well, also, it's it, there's an added element that it's Monique, right? When she said, yeah, when she goes. Precious. No, when she goes, what you thinking about college for, you dumb motherfucker? I, I mean, I fucking almost <laughs> fell out of my chair. I'm doing a brutal read of it. Because my thing at the end of the day, she's still a comedian. So it's some, like. Was, <laughs> she has those chops. Yeah, I think, I just think. She's uh, like, eat my pussy, precious. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a real curveball. Speaking of curveballs, I'd have to say that if you probably if you read that movie, it's got to be way funnier. Like on paper, if you read it, it's yeah. got to be fucking hilarious. I don't. Yeah, I don't know how people uh, pick what movies to do. Luckily, that'll never be an issue for me. <laughs> so. That's happened to me a long time ago. Uh, when I would get sometimes I would get shit, and I would literally go into audition for it, mm-hmm. thinking it was a drama and it was a comedy, and vice versa. Oh and my I would go god. In, <laughs> That probably just, helped your audition. Oh no, no, no! I used oh. to get a uh, yeah. Of course, what, now what you're was like that? now you're a pro. You're that, a professional actor. That was my feedback back in the day. What, are they like <laughs> my agent? Yeah, they, they said what was that? No, I was bad. It's crazy the things though. Do you find that motivating? Like I was, I usually like positive response. It actually motivates me more than negative. But there are a few right. negative things people have said to me. Uh, that have stuck yeah. with me really hard. Like that, that <laughs> smug. Oh, yeah. Well, I talked about that on here. The guy who oh. said, why are you a smug bitch to all your colleagues? Because I, I texted uh, Bill he, a screen cap of it, and he was cracking up. Like, he just wrote back, like, ha, 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 I love that guy or something. And it made me like, oh, yeah, I guess this is pretty funny. <laughs> oh, if you saw I should have, you know what I should have done to make you feel better? I should have brought in some of the <laughs> shit that people say to me on Twitter. I, well, you retweeted some of it after, uh, what was that show that you just recently retweeted, like, the people saying shitty oh, I did a couple. I did Inside the NFL, <laughs> and I made fun of the, the stuff that they were wearing pink, yeah. and everybody was giving, I hope nobody you know gets breast cancer. It's yeah. just like, all right, well, I hope nobody you know works in those sweatshops where they fucking put them together. Um, I did that one, and then I did the uh, the uh, the Night of Too Many Stars. Oh, yeah, that was the one I saw. The Steve Jobs one, yeah. And I was just like, all right. It, it really is like, I think probably that helps a lot of comedians when you do that, because people respect you, and then they say, oh, all right, so everyone just gets shit on, I guess. Oh, no, that's, that's what tw- tw- Twitter, if you put a, your fucking face on there, it's like sitting on a dunking stool. It's just inevitable. But, uh, but, but you know what? what? I have to say something. I just realized something. I think I one time really sincerely thanked you on Twitter for being supportive and nice to me, and then you wrote something like shitty and insincere back. So I you did, because I thought you were fucking with me. I wasn't. I was serious. Well, first of all, you write everything in capital letters, <laughs> so I feel like you're mocking people who write in capital letters. You no. know what it is? You have so many walls up. <laughs> I know oh that there's a wonderful person in there. Uh-huh. If you're just going to let it out someday. That's all it is. Immediately, I'm just searching for my buttons of like what sound effect to yeah. play right now. I can't even I look bet, at you I in the eyes. When you go to therapy, you're either one of those people, the first time you went. I crush I was, therapy. I was going to say, you, <laughs> you either just immediately out of nowhere bursted into tears for like a fucking hour. Or it took them like four years just to get you to like. Do you want to know get, what? Get get. get I've Some never, sort of you know how they have a couch in therapy? I have never laid down. Like, I'm like, I'm not fucking laying down. To me, that's like too passive. Like, I'll just sit there and like lean forward. Yeah, I, I didn't do I went to therapy for a couple of years. I just sat in the chair and just looked at the person. Yeah. I just, I'm not going to So you're there. not going to be my guide into warmth and sensitivity. So, um, me? <laughs> no. I, I'm surprisingly uh, a lot warmer than I, than I appear. Really? I made pumpkin bread. If I knew you have any... <laughs> I knew if you had a sweet tooth, I would have brought some in. And I'll tell you this, it's fucking delicious and way better than any of that shit down there at the uh, House of Pies. Well, I'll tell you what, though. I went there only because it was late and the place I wanted to go was closed. But Bright Spot has a key lime pie that is so good. Graham cracker crust, soft, not hard like some pies are. Holidays are coming up. I start making pies around that time. Are you kidding me? You make pies? You've just become... I can actually... Crust. I can do the crust and everything. They don't quite come out right. I mean, the the consistency is fine, but I never have enough dough to do the thing uh, around you know, where you pinch them around, like those old ladies can. The pedestal that I have you on just Crumbles. shot up by two hundred oh, feet. It crumbled. <laughs> no, <laughs> come on. I'm a nice person. I mean, should we take phone calls? Might as well, right? Let's see. Shit. Call from Marshall. Marshall. Chelsea, oh my God, I'm, this class is so whack. <laughs> Pardon? I don't know, I'm on break from this uh, whack ass history of psychology class at uh, in my college. What's that your sounds app? horrific, dude. Why are you doing that? <laughs> Did you dream of doing that as a kid? Is that the direction you want to go in? And this is just one of the hurdles you got to go over, or is this like what you really want to? You don't want to do it. You yeah, just doing this, it. This is a hurdle, a whack class on the road to being a. Uh, as a psychologist myself, 
So do you, one, do you dream not, of uh, getting you know, be, being able to psychoanalyze some serial killer to just see if he's like competent to stand trial or yeah. if he's out of his mind? That maybe not so much, but those jobs do pay the, the six figs. Yeah, you know, when you want to just sit there and talk to the guy, but I, more likely I would go cognitive psychology and just more of a applied science. I just pop into a place, they get presented with a problem, and then I'll just try to solve it psychologically. Mm, boring anecdote in progress. <laughs> Why do you why do you take calls? You just shit all over him. I, I'm starting to agree with this guy. That is a funny thing. Marsh. All right, man. Well, thank you for calling. <laughs> all right, thanks for having me. Right, Marshall, man. best of luck. Honestly, before I get out of here, I just want to say in all sincerity, you try sound- to say it like you care. <laughs> Actually, try to tap into that feeling where you care. Okay. <laughs> She hold can't on. do it. She no, hold on. I can't. I can't, Marshall. I'm gonna stare at you when you do it to Marshall. I yeah. Love, Marshall, I love you. I love you too, Chelsea. Yeah! In your face, Bill Burr. Eat a you dick. Didn't. You did. <laughs> you did. You did. You actually. You went into. You went into phone sex voice. <laughs> That's all I have. Like Guards or sex. That's it. All right. Well, that was. This is how the calls go. You know. You I never take calls. Call from. Hi. Do you have a question for William Burr? Is Bill Burr there? Yes, I am. I'm sitting here on, on the edge of my seat wondering uh, <laughs> what you major in. No, see, you're in glass houses. <laughs> Look mm-hmm. how you talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have to keep it funny. Oh, oh you, you were yeah. genuinely sitting on the edge of your seat? No, no, I'm trying to keep it funny. <laughs> I gave that other guy good advice. I was like, this is what the fuck you want to do. Right. All right, what are you doing? What's up? <laughs> dude, that's crazy, dude. You're hilarious, man. <laughs> Thank you. This is going to be like that Chris Farley interview. <laughs> you remember your first remember that special? That was awesome. <laughs> All right. So what is your... I don't really have a question. I just saw that you were there, and I, I don't know. I don't really have a question. Cool. Way to bring something to the table. Listen, I appreciate that you like what I do, and uh, keep listening to the, the wonderful show here. <laughs> See, that was nice. Are we really going to do this for an hour? What do you want to do? Just talk? I would just shoot the shit rather than have these people come in and say, I don't have anything to say. <laughs> and then we have now to Now you somehow... see what my process is like. No, this is right here why I would never want to host a talk show. Call from... Justin. <sighs> Dustin. Hello? Dustin. Yes. Hey. Hello? What's up? Nothing. I, I wanted to ask something about Pete Holmes. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hear the news? He died this morning. Oh, thank God. That's why it's. I'm trying to keep a like a happy voice on because I don't want to mess up my podcast. But he actually, he did. He ate rat poison on accident and then died this morning. Oh, so we'll never find out why he lies about his height? He lies about his height? Well, he says that he's always says that he's six foot six. He said what? He says that he's like six six, and I stood next to him, and he's, there's no way he's six foot six. Do you know that Bill Burr is here? You know, I love yeah. Pete Holmes. What? I did a I did a thing with him one time, and he kept trying to claim that he feels like the reason he doesn't get acting work is because he's so tall. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, it's that's just tall like, you, yes, just he's not saying, tall at all. You stink. <laughs> and you need to take an acting class, Pete Holmes. <laughs> you heard it here first, everybody. Pete Holmes can't act. No, he can act, <laughs> but he, he needs to learn how to audition. If his height's he, getting he in the like way, a baby. I, I, I would use I would use my height to intimidate the casting director. No, I I, just, I don't get auditions because I look like a supermodel and hey, people. Br- Brad Garrett was six nine. Yeah, he's very tall. He's good. Yeah, he's he, a great actor. Yeah, well, they booked him on a set. Yeah, he's very tall. What? Brad Garrett. Yeah. You know who's also tall and a good actor is uh, Shaq. <laughs> Bill hates taking phone calls. I might have to clear the line. Okay. No, it's your show. You could take phone calls, but I'm going to sit here looking at the ceiling, rubbing my head in a painful <laughs> way. <laughs> but there's something kind of entertaining about that for me. All right, listen. Uh, thanks for your call. That was that was um, invigorating. Invigorating and. Educational. He's Educational. Six four tops, that's all I want to say. Hmm? He's six four tops. I don't know if that's true. I think he is pretty tall. Okay. Cool. 
What is it about the calls in particular that you uh, don't like? They, they never go anywhere. But some of them do. You just kind of have to wade through a lot of garbage. Oh, do you edit out? Yeah. So you're going to edit out all of those that didn't just work there? <laughs> <laughs> well, what I think might be interesting about those is your reaction to it. And also, it's funny to me that people call and we're just bickering. <laughs> you're like, you're not sincere. And I'm like, look, you're not being sincere. And they're just waiting. <laughs> it's like we're like the parents in the front of the car. And they're just like, um, are you going to talk to me? Wait, oh, I, I texted you and asked, like, what kind of stuff did you want to talk about? And I thought your list was pretty funny, actually, because... What it did was, I put again? I'm, gonna, I'm bringing it up right now. You said, my lack of knowledge on election day. Mm -hmm. Political speeches. Revolving doors. That's yep. a good one. Guns slash generators and powdered food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. What do you want to talk about first? Well, I'm curious, why is revolving doors on this list? Because I was just in a fucking casino and they had a revolving door. They're not quicker. Right. That whole idea that will just keep people just, there just, there'll be constant movement. It's so much slower than just opening a door and walking right. through it. I guess this was a bigger one and it allowed people, I guess, to walk through <laughs> at half a mile an hour with their bags. But it, it wasn't any easier. Yeah. They're not, but here's my. Rotaries and revolving doors, do, they don't work. They're a failure and we need to give into that. Here's just, a question yes. Is the idea of the revolving door to keep the temperature? the same like does it is the idea that it doesn't let inside or outside <laughs> outside <laughs> i think it's supposed to help global warming because it's actually yeah. fanning the outside yeah. and we're using just human but if you yeah. push too hard your body heat goes up and it offsets what you've done yeah if they get I rid believe. of that there'll be like 10 hurricanes yeah i have a whole team doing research on the uh the pros and cons of revolving doors and so far it's been a landslide that we need to get rid of them i do appreciate as a lazy person i do appreciate being able to walk into one well it's just it's the same process of pushing a door open you just got to do it forever if you just walk through a door you push it open and you're there or you right. just go you have like to that physically push the revolving, yeah, the revolving door, door you just door, you shuffle just keep, through you it just keep <laughs> pushing and pushing and pushing uh, oh you're not there. talking about the electric ones I'm thinking of the ones that are just kind of, aren't they kind of just Oh, then spinning? those ones you have to come walking in and come to a complete stop before it's something registers like, oh, yeah, yeah. oh, he's in there. <laughs> yeah. He's in there. Let's, let's, let's get it going, guys. <laughs> I'm just imagining you in your hotel, like, standing in front of the revolving door, just, like, lost in thought, red in the face, just fuming. <laughs> and just no, like, I was just walking by. I just kept looking at people like, Why? don't you see me passing you? As I go through the other door. Oh, so you're doing that thing of like a stranger who's like looking over at them like you guys are dummies. <laughs> no, like, it's more like fascinated. Like, yeah. Why do they keep going in there? That's why people are fat. Yeah. They just don't want to open the doors. Yeah. Like I'll exercise, but I'll always choose the laziest possible thing in like if there's a real life application. But then I'll go on a jog or I'll go on a walk or I'll eat a whole pie. It depends on my At mood. the worst pie place ever. I'll make you a cream pie, I swear to God. You'll, I would love that. fucking faint into that plastic whatever Just it is. cream? It's just an insane. Put it this way. Somebody <laughs> tried to steal the recipe. That's how insane it is. And you wouldn't let them? Huh? You wouldn't no, let... it's a family recipe. You're not having it. That's like my grandfather when he was dying. I was trying to figure out his salad dressing, but I didn't want to say like... Hey, you're about to die, as we no, all know. No, that's bullshit. He should. He wouldn't he, he do should it. Pass it on to blood relatives. Yeah. Some person comes in, and they start rifling through your little recipe thing. You got to get Who them out of it. Who was it? Huh? Who did that? Uh, nobody, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it? Dish, dish. <laughs> let's get into it. Let's break this one open. <clears throat> Ow. Nah, I just I don't know what I did to my fucking elbow. Mm. I think I did it on the plane. I flew southwest. Um. Uh. Yeah, I, the only thing I like Southwest because I met Too Short on one of my flights. Oh, you did? He's on a reality show. Oh, yeah. I want to see that. Couples Therapy. DMX was on it also, and it was hilarious because DMX, you know DMX, right? Yeah, I hate seeing all these rock stars and rappers, and they all have to do this stuff now because nobody buy, buys albums anymore. I know, but so I do love watching it. And sit there and like listen to people who should be in the crowds at their shows, yeah. sing Row, Row, Row Your Boat, and they go, yeah, you got something. It I'm is going to pick you for my team. Like, why is Christina Aguilera doing that show? She can sing her ass off. Just go on the fucking road. Sing What a Man, What a Man, or whatever the hell you sing, right? Well, Get she's your doing money it. And then go home. I'm sure she's doing it because it's easier. Like, from the few concert 
movies I've watched uh, the Katy Perry one and the Justin Bieber one and the Beyonce one. Right. It's like you have to go on the road for a year straight. No, you so, don't. You can do whatever you want. I you don't can, you know. Can go, you can go on, she could go do one gig in Vegas and probably make the money she's making on that dumbass show. But wouldn't that in lazy boy? I don't know. I guess she could do that, but I guess her fans would be enraged or something. I don't know. What if she just did one show? Yeah, or maybe it's to keep yourself relevant and in the public eye, but you get to just like, yeah, stay in L.A. Uh, I, I don't understand it. I, don't, I really don't. I don't understand television shows in general. Why you would want to be on one, on one, on one, rather than just going and guest starring. I mean, obviously, if it's it's an unbelievable show, an awesome show. But like most of them aren't. Did you never pitch a show? Oh no, I pitched a zillion of them. I'm terrible <laughs> at it. But the, th but the great thing was, is I got to kind of do a little bit of it. And I, after a while, it was just like, you know, if you start selling tickets on the road, it's just so much easier. Right. You just go out, the show's at 8, be off by 9.30. It starts at 8, the show's over at 9.30. There's no res reshoots, there's no hair and makeup. There's no somebody with a clipboard. There's no advertisers. There's none of that shit. It's fuck. It's a dream. The only the only thing is you got to get on a plane, get, yeah. get on a plane and fly to the middle of fucking nowhere. But other than that, have you ever it's been a great like gig. really sick and you have a weekend and like you it's too late to cancel it or something and you're flying really sick? Um, no, I usually get sick there. And then what do you do? I do what everybody does. I take the same stupid cold remedies that don't work, like airborne and all that crap. And uh, then I get sick. And you play through like Michael Jordan or whatever with the flu. <laughs> do you have like great shows? No, I just open up with I'm sick. I don't feel good. Yeah. And then I, I turn that into some sort of comedy. Right. About having the sniffles. <laughs> I did. I did a, when I did Let It Go, I had a fucking brutal cold. Yeah. When I did this, I did a special. Every time I go to San Francisco, I'm like, I'm like, like allergic to that city. I don't know what it is. It's freezing there. Yeah, deceivingly. Like there's, there's, their winter, their summer is in like uh, October and November. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? What's that? The Mark Twain quote. No, it's Jesus Christ! <laughs> That's one of the most complimentary things anybody's ever said. I, I, I've read a couple of his things. The coldest. What is it? The coldest summer I've. You know, the coldest well, winter, winter I've ever spent, spent was the summer in San Francisco. All right, know it all. Okay. No, <laughs> yeah. now, now that, that's actually annoying. Yeah. The way that that's I, put. I don't like clever shit like that. You don't? Like I, Oscar I, Wilde, I, I like can't. witticisms, books of witticisms. I guess back then that was considered dope. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I, I don't like, uh, I, I don't like clever on any level. Yeah, I don't like, like, you know witty. what I don't like? I don't like clever. I don't like humor books, like humorists, where it's like chuckles. You know, like everyone's always suggesting books that are like humorists that people like to read and they're like. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't, like I don't care stuff. for it. I'd rather read something that made me and cry. I, I feel like they look down on, uh, yeah, the, on real comedy and they yeah. think like what they're doing is 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 a, is a cut above and it's like no you're you're either not funny or you're completely overthinking it yeah that's all i have to say about that did no, i just I criticize mark twain something. i think i did i actually read a book that uh he had a, I had a whole he had a bunch of short stories i read on one time and they were actually like laughing out loud which is something that's expressions lol ruined. i lol'd when yeah. i watched it. Like, it was like 100 <laughs> years old at that point and it was still fucking hilarious so yeah mark twain it was funny he had some you know, he, that guy, he had some he, good ones. He had some talent, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I'm going to advertise this episode. We figure out that Mark Twain was pretty funny. He should stick with it. Um, is there any famous comedians that are legends that you don't connect with? Uh, legends how? Tickets, like, ticket know, sales like, or considered legends by other comedians? Yeah, considered legends, I guess, by history, like where it's they're respected by on a mass level. Yeah. There might be one or two. Like, <laughs> would you not want to say it? No, because the following is just so fucking rabid. I know. That's how that, I feel. There's certain like, ones yeah, where... Yeah, you were probably talking about the same person. We might not be, though. We, we might have to... We, this is one we might have to talk about off Privately. the air. Off the air. Behind, <laughs> behind the fern over there. <laughs> but I'll it tell, is I, weird. You want to hear who, who my guys are? All right. They're uh, obviously Pryor and uh -huh. Carlin. And, uh, Wait, these are people you like? Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I, I'm a huge Sam Kin I think Sam Kinison is brutally mm -hmm. underrated. I mean, partly because, you know, 
the way he kind of flamed out, and right as he was coming back, he he died. But he got he got a little crazy. He didn't handle the fame thing well. You start doing a a, yeah. a, a, a stand up special, and you're walking out with two girls on leashes, and you take a phone call <laughs> in the middle of it. I mean, you didn't have enough guys around there. <laughs> that sounds cool though. Too many yes men around you. Someone should have been like, dude, you probably don't want to play guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, you're, you're way better a comedian than that, but that one that he did... I think did, that's that, funny to take a call. You don't like that? Uh, I, I'd have to see how it actually played out. Yeah, he No, he called somebody's girlfriend up who was cheating on him and oh. screamed, you fucking bitch and all I don't know, but uh-huh. there's other stuff. Like, the thing about him was another guy. He got... You know, I love his early stuff when he's just learn, learning, like, this power he has. And then he kind of reins it in on this one special, uh, the one that he did the, uh, where he just had the trench coat. I guess he always had the trench coat. But the, the one that, that looked like it was shot uh, down on Sunset Boulevard at the Roxy. I don't know. That I'm one very... where he did the thing on necrophilia <laughs> when you were dead uh-huh. and you're laying face down. You're like, ah, yeah, this isn't so bad. I'm dead. And then all of a sudden, oh, 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 what's that? There's a dick in my ass. And one of the greatest tags ever, he goes, it never ends. <laughs> <laughs> but he was like uh you know that that period of him like his first letterman yeah is unbelievable and it's really that like, you guys hey hang on we don't know about this guy and this and they people say that all the time this guy, this guy is a little out of his mind but this was actually the real deal yeah and you could actually feel the tension like you didn't know what this guy was gonna I do know. and he went up into the crowd who has the balls to do that but then you watch his second one Mm-hmm. The fame thing is already a right. I just It's just me as a fan. Not, I'm not criticizing him as a comedian. Just me as a fan. I'm looking. He just comes walking out. He's like, hey, Paul. He's, hey, they, it's just like, he looked like he was like accepting a Lifetime Achievement Award. Yeah. And it wasn't nearly as like put together. It looked like he was kind of winging it. Um, fame just uh, like, I mean, <laughs> I was about to say the most cliched thing about like how fame just like destroys a lot of people, man. Yeah. No, you know? It's not normal. No, but it really it like, seem normal. The longer I'm here in L.A., the more I'm like, wow, like on a really deep level, I'm like, you know, I want to be good at what I do and I want people to like it. But the more I see of how fame impacts people on a psychological level, the less I want to have it because people become so crazy basically i think a lot of people in la have personality disorders and then when they get famous everyone caters to it and it gets worse and worse and worse you know like i actually i just think most people the average person uh if you give them a little bit of power they become a dick yeah well there's all those scientific studies like like the prisoner experiment or something i read in college no you just take the average guy just standing there all of a sudden you make him a bouncer he just somehow has the authority to say whether you can go through this door or not right and all of a sudden stand a little taller in his shoes you know, next thing you know, he's getting a freebie blowjob or something, just taking advantage of it, not doing the right thing. I'm you're, not saying you're everybody. You're really painting a scene. I really am. <laughs> you're like, the lights are low, the girl's a redhead, she's got luscious, creamy tits. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what, that's what I think. Uh, did you read Patton Oswalt's Gatekeeper thing? He wrote, no. I forget what festival. I'm just, I have the worst brain. I can't remember any details about anything. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> I miss that. I miss everything. Like I said, I miss everything. But I wouldn't want to read it anyway because I don't. I wouldn't want his his thoughts in my head, because then because you know, then I get worried that like, uh, uh, it they you know when you just, I mean when when you're riffing as a comedian, it's like all that shit that's in your head is everything that you experienced. Right. So that's what's coming out when you're improving. So, so if it's you know so the references you're using, it's a really weird thing where it's like you know. You're just making references to movies or something that happened to you when you were a kid, but blah, 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 blah. So I don't need like hours and hours of other people's acts in my head with all the other bullshit that I have in there. I just don't, I, you know. Are you scared you're going to start using applause sound effects on your podcast after this? No, I'm not because I, there's no way I could figure that out. I couldn't, and also the way my podcast is done, it, would, it wouldn't make sense. Right. It, w- it would be like when Guns N' Roses added like a keyboard player. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, and they got a guy with a French horn. Why is he doing that? I have a certain level of unprofessionalism right, right. that I have to maintain on my podcast where I think the whole thing falls apart. Right. And then it'll just be exposed that it's really not that good. <laughs> Wait, what was I just going to ask you? Oh, yeah. What you were saying about like not seeing other comedians. Because I have a lot of comedians, I think, in my generation who will send me links to other comedians sets on Conan or links to this or links to that. I'm like, I don't want to fucking watch it. Most of the time, I just don't. And there'll be people who see every single set, every single album. I can't. I can't watch. 
uh, comedians go on talk shows. I can't watch. No, not not no panel. I can watch him do, but coming out and doing a stand-up yeah. set, I can't watch it because I get too nervous for him. Yeah, it stresses me out. It does. It's just like, I it, it it's like I, I don't know what it is. I don't know what to compare. What doing five minutes on a fucking talk show? It's like you can't go out there and stumble. Although I did, I did, I did on Conan. <laughs> you my, did. I hit my balls for like ninety seconds. Really? Yeah, I think I heard Max Weinberg's drumstick move. Like he uh. hit it on the <laughs> like. <laughs> he did something. <laughs> um, I, did, I, I did the Tonight Show. Yeah, I did the Tonight Show. And uh, and they, they, I was the first comic when he got it to go on. And they had me do, the, they go, now when you go out there, make sure you do this big, long walk out. Like, they want me to, rather than like <laughs> walk directly silent. to it, they had me do this long walk around. Yeah. And like all the, all when he brings you out, all the band did was just go, ladies and gentlemen, give me Bill Burr. Yeah. And the band just goes, da, da, da. And that's it. So they're like, <laughs> you just see da, da, da. And, then, and, then, and they're like holding the note. Weinberg's playing this role. And I had to run up, sort of do this little run to the microphone. You just hear your slacks rubbing against each other as you, <laughs> as you gallivant across the stage. Sound of my shoes hitting that wax floor. Yeah, yeah so then I went up. And I made it, and I addressed it. Yeah. And it was, but I think it, it came off as weird because they were. I, well, yeah, they're not expecting anything in the moment. Yeah, it just kind of came out. I was just like, just like, <laughs> gee, that was a long walk, huh? And people were like, <laughs> the walk was too long. And then I immediately went into something about that the punchline was, you dumb bitch, or something like that. And then <laughs> I was just tanking. <laughs> and uh, then I finally, I finally I got him. But I mean, I, I legitimately was eating my balls I see for a that. good 90 seconds. Oh, yeah. All, all, your, uh, all your listeners, they'll, they'll be all over that. If I said I actually had a great set, 90 Too Many Stars went phenomenal. You don't want to see that. Go watch the one where they told me to take too long a walk. Do you hate that? Like the Philly thing? Uh, the whatever the you know the, the I don't I don't pay attention to it anymore I, I it took me a long time to figure that out to I just was, ignore it was, yeah it was really annoyed me at first and then I was like wait a minute Bill don't you you trash everybody you trash everybody but and no, I now think people what now, found... you, now what your fucking special people can't trash you so it's like all right so I accepted that I'm gonna get trashed but then I also ha I don't have to look at it because uh, and I also kind of developed more of a uh, a, a tougher skin, but it was a, a new thing to have to get used to. Where yeah. you just, I'm used to going down to the club and getting heckled. Right. I'm ready for it. But like, you know, you're sitting at home eating cereal yeah, and all I of a sudden you just, <laughs> somebody just fucking slaps yeah. you across the face. It's it, like, it, it, it's can really, it can be really intimate. It's like, so it's, if, especially if you're looking at it when you wake up in the morning, which I compulsively do. And then it's like, you wake up just some horrible thing, like yeah. you snide bitch <laughs> or whatever it is. And you're just like, well, I have one. I, I've actually, I, I used to back in the day, like MySpace days and everything, yeah. like before, like this whole weird thing now where if I respond to your tweet, everybody can read it. Yeah. Like all of a sudden everybody's listening in on a conversation. I don't, that's why I don't like Twitter. But like back my, in MySpace days, uh, I would like, if somebody went hard at me, I would go even harder at them. Right. And the amount of people that I legitimately hurt their feelings. Yeah. Uh, amazing. No, I know, cause because sometimes cause you they, fight they, back. They go, oh, I was just a fan. I was just kidding. And I was trying like, to do what you do. Yeah, like, and you're how like, you sorry. Oh, I went sorry. straight for your dick and balls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am so sorry. You unleashed childhood demons. Yeah. I really I, do. I used to not do that. And then I just sort of rounded some corner where I started interacting with people who attacked me. But it's like a, it's, if you're thinking about doing it, anyone who's listening, I also just block people instantly. So that's it's, always it's a real gamble. You give them a time out. Yeah. yeah. That's always good. <laughs> time you know out what? for life. I, I used to write just stuff like that didn't make any sense when I would respond back to them and they would write some big long thing trashing me about something that I said, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And just write back. I knew it. And you get set when, and they'd be like, knew, knew what? Like, I just love that they would be excited that you responded yeah, because they wanted to get into this thing. So you yeah. do respond and then they don't know what you mean. And then you just leave them hanging. And then they ask you and then you just leave them hanging. And then that was, that was it. Or I would, I would Google like images, like dog shit. And then I would, oh. I would, I would put the picture of the dog shit. Unorthodox. Out. No, no. And then I would, I would send it to them. You so know they what would else open I have? it up. They would open it up thinking, I have to say this because you have like such ADD. You're looking at like 12 things here. So what I, I, I would send, <laughs> <laughs> and you have your standard like, oh, that's interesting. And I totally know that you didn't hear a fucking word that I said. I, I did. You look at dog shit pictures. How complicated no, is that? 
No. You send them pictures of dog shit. That's what I did, and then I then I would then I would eat. I wasn't sure because a couple times you've done that to me. We just kind of go. Mm, no, no. There's times where there's times where I would 100 percent accept it. I was trying but to you build off that. what you're oh, saying, okay. which is that like you know I have a go to also, which is a little clip I took from a Martin Lawrence video, which I me and Moshe Kasher started sending this to people on Twitter. Um, we had two tactics we talked about together, me and Moshe. One is saying that's actually really hurtful. That's a place where I'm really sensitive, and that hurts me when you say that just being really honest about it we think is funny right. and then another one is sending them to this clip on youtube of martin lawrence and this is i'll play you the audio you want to criticize something criticize these nuts <laughs> Fuck you. and you send it to them and i've i've turned off commenting for that video so it's just like you can just send them this video and be done with it and like they just <laughs> No matter how many times they respond, you can just oh, send can it. Oh, can people do that? Because sometimes people trash me and then you can't even reply to them. It's just, I've, oh. That's a really like bitchy move. On Twitter, you can usually reply. I don't know how. I would love to oh. be able to, to no, stop No, you know what it is? It's probably replying. me. Like, I, I have a, uh, I don't know what it is that I do with, these, <laughs> with anything that has to do with computers. But like the classic thing that I always get is I'll tell the computer nerd person what the problem is. And then they'll be like, oh, we can fix that. And then yeah. there's always they click a couple things and then they just go hmm that's odd hey they always get it that's oh, odd or so that's, you really that's have... strange never seen that before this doesn't make any <laughs> sense and i don't i don't go into the guts of this thing you're probably when you're mad like and, hurling and... it across a room or doing weird things that like just i was really... very hurtful <laughs> that's a place on. that i'm very sensitive <laughs> See, it's kind of fun <laughs> <laughs> to just not have to put up the guard. You know, I do throw my phone, you but, do? I, but I, I throw it into pillows and, and like cushions and stuff like that. <laughs> That's very mature. It's very ref like someone who went it to anger a management class. Oh, so you actually give me a compliment. It isn't mature. No, it isn't. Interesting. I'm well, that's the thing. Some like, I can't tell any anybody on this show whether they're actually being sincere <laughs> or not. <laughs> but I think that's so funny. Like, don't you hang out with... Well, I guess you don't. Like, uh, that was a question I was going to ask you is you don't watch comedy because you don't want to be influenced by people. But I always think about, like, high school... My group of friends, we all had jokes and inside jokes, and we all influenced each other, and none of us were comedians, so it didn't matter. No one was right. like, that's my bit, you know, or I came up with that. And so do you feel like when you hang out with comedians, like if something funny is coming up, but in conversation you're like, Ugh, like, is this going to be yours or is it going to be mine? No, that was more early on when you had no material. But now it's just like, it's more like you just... Yeah, me and my friends never did that. Do you, you know, feel like you're just, influenced you just, socially? Every, everybody would just pile on and start. Tr I came up, like the guys I came up with, all we did was we just sat around trashing each other. That's all Who we did. Who was the first person to say dummy? <laughs> I feel like everyone at the Comedy Cellar when I was in New York was always just like, all right, dummy, no, shut that up, was dummy. That tough, tough crowd speak. Uh -huh. Tough crowd slash seller speak. <laughs> Shut up, stupid. You yeah. Big, you big dummy. No, it wasn't your big dummy. That was Fred Sanford. Uh, dummy, I'm finished. I'm awful. Yeah. It was an amalgam of Keith, Norton, Colin, yeah. Patrice, and it became this one language. Right. And it was more like <clears throat> they, language were, they, of love. They, they were almost like stock tags to an original <laughs> insult. Yeah. You yeah. have to come with an original insult and then you could tag then you it could then earn you could that. tag it was stupid yeah. shut up stupid you know oh, 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 one of those um but i wasn't it's weird i was friends with all those guys but i wasn't uh you know i wasn't in the starting lineup of that sitting around trashing each other well, you weren't no i used to take a pounding what about now it's changed now it's not a lot of the same people right no it's over our generation and it's it the baton has been passed so where once, are you guys now your uh, generation well, uh, the ones who are still alive. I know, like half awful. of them yeah. are dead. It's yeah. crazy. <clears throat> um, I don't know where we are. We're out doing shit. <laughs> it's like, who, where were the people who came before us? It's like, it's like high school. Yeah. So you went through them and you still go there. You know what and, you are? And even, and even if you go there, like, and I go there, like, if they got, like, the table, it's it's not my time anymore. Like, it's it's for the young guys and, and, and you, you got to... You know, you got to move on and let them have their time. You can't be like that old. You guys, you the way you do comedy. Eh? Although I do make fun of a lot of the alt scene shit. <laughs> 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 it's just you know, it's fun to make fun of. But you've always supported me. Do you see me as that? As what? No. Yeah. No, but you look. I never thought. 
I made fun of all comedy one time on my podcast, just fucking around. Yeah. Somebody brought it up. I heard about it. So I, I, I didn't hear that. Yeah, yeah. It, I, mean, I also made fun of male breast cancer on that fucking podcast. Nobody cared. <laughs> so. Because there's no one who's really going to take up for men with breast cancer. Yeah, I no, like. but I'm just, I said a couple other things. It's not a sexy that, disease. That, yeah, that you would think, you would think people would give a shit about, and they didn't. Uh -huh. They all latched on to that, but like, I'm not saying you know that that's an inferior form i'm not i wasn't saying that i was just i was just making fun of it but right. I mean, but you you know you do both rooms I, I i i mean i mainly do clubs but i i dip in and out of those rooms and i i definitely think they're it, it's great to uh to whatever get them in front of as many different kinds of people as you can but you know that was pr pretty much all i i mean i was just i don't know i don't yeah. know what i'm trying to say here I just got it got a little boring after a while to watch nerds perform to nerds right. and then talk about how smart the crowd is because they're them. Right, right. You're into everything I'm into. God, you guys are smart. Well, I don't like anyone. I've really been thinking a lot lately about why am I doing this because I don't like making people like me. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, why did I pick a career in which I have to convince people to like me? I'm like, I don't like you either. Let's all just get out of here. Shut up. You're I'm serious. Stage. You want something. I know. You I want to I... be loved. <laughs> you want to be loved. You want to be held. Podcast over. <laughs> <laughs> I do actually want to be in love. Well, who doesn't? If you didn't, you'd be like, you'd be literally, you'd be like a sociopath. Who do you think I should date? Who do you, who I think you should date? Nobody in this business, I wouldn't think. I, what about, uh... But what else is there in Los Angeles? Jesus Christ, what do you mean what else is there in Los Angeles? I think everyone here works in entertainment in some in your, capacity. In your circle. You think you think the people over at Gelson's? If you <laughs> you those, want me to date someone at Gelson's? In all honesty, some, someone, if I was dating a guy who, who worked at Gelson's... Who manages the Gelson's? <laughs> if I said I'm dating a Gelson's <laughs> manager, would you Ralph's? make fun of me at all or no? No. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. I, wouldn't. I would actually think, wow, that's actually, you know what it is out here. You go to a party and everybody, oh, I'm a director, I'm a producer, I'm a comedian, yeah. I'm an actor. What do you do? I'm a veterinarian. You're like, ah, oh, fuck. What's I was that like? And you corner them and all you want to hear about is that because you're sick of everything else. So, no, you know, you go over to the Ralphs, <laughs> a manager, and you can talk about how they're trying to convince people to check themselves out. Well, like, I don't know. Not I don't. cashiers for free. I was dating a waiter. You know? Who and didn't act. No, he did. I guess, is that why? People did not look jazzed when I said what he did. <laughs> and he's a waiter? Yeah. No one was like, oh, that's you know what great. I mean? You know what fascinates me is those career waiters at uh, those old school steakhouses. I love that. I know? love old men who like have been like recommending someone special for 40 years. I can't tell. Are you serious? I'm serious. I love well, old you gotta, people. You gotta give me some sort of a signal, signal like this. So, yeah, <laughs> wink and wink nod. If I, what about a wink if I'm not being huh? serious? Right now, I'm being dead serious. I love old people across the board. Like I love old people, and yeah, old people are the shit. Yeah, and I love like a, nothing more than like an old man who has like class, you know, and a sparkle in his eye, and like a way, like he's set in his way, you know, and sitting has, on a bunch of loot. Looking for a younger girl, gonna die no, soon. No, 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 no. Do you know no. a lot of gold diggers go to steakhouses? Really? I learned that when I was in uh, when I was in Cleveland, Ohio. Desolate what do they do? Town. Just sit at the bar with their tits out and just wait? Yeah. Hmm. That's pretty much it. But then the, there was a whole there was an art to it. I got the both of their numbers. I was gonna bring them back when I when I wait. Did. What do you mean? You just skipped a lot of the story. Two of them were hitting on you? No, no, no. I asked them after the show. I said, what do you guys do? And they straight up said, we're gold diggers. Oh, and, and that, my God. And that was it. I was in. And I sat there doing like a 60-minute interview. It was, one of the great, <laughs> it was one of the great... They had the whole fucking thing down. The clock uh, was we, ticking. Like, we never go to the bathroom together. We watch each other's drinks. Oh, that's Like, smart. so they don't roofie your drink. And then talked about how they finagled, like, uh, courtside seats by the, oh. the old steak guys. And then you try to make... Eye contact with the Cavalier, Cleveland Cavalier, or somebody on the other team. You're yeah. just working your way up. Oh, wow. You know, like hosting, featuring, headlining, just, and they broke the right. whole thing down. And my jaw was on the ground. I'm like, you guys, and they were so honest. I was like, they literally should write a book on it or something. And I, I, I was like, I took down their numbers and I was going to try to get them on. I used to do the show with Joe DeRosa uh -huh. uh, called Uninformed, and we were going to have them on there. What happened to you guys? What happened? I moved out here. Oh, okay. And we were working for, uh, Sirius XM, which is absolutely no money, but it's great exposure. Do you make a it's lot of money exposure. on your podcast? Um, no, but I probably make more money than I would if I was with somebody else. You know, 
I would think. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Because yeah, all they end up doing, they, it's always like the standard business deal is that, is that behind the music contract. Right. Like every fucking business thing that I'm right. involved in, it's like, okay, we're in business together. Yeah. All the money's going to go to me. Yeah. And then I'll tell you how much we made. Yeah, it's and crazy. And I'll hand you this piece of paper with some numbers and I'm going to sit there rubbing my chin like I know what the fuck's going on. Yeah. And then everyone's just like, yeah, you should sign it. This is pretty standard. <laughs> yeah. This is the stand. Well, yeah. When you question it. Yeah. That's when you know you have them cornered. When the only thing that they can come back with is this is the standard. Yeah. This is what people are signing. Uh, in general. Me and I, Al Madrigal, actually, and a couple of guys, we actually just started this podcast network. I heard. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty and, cool. And, and it's uh, it's not one of those ones where you have to sign, like, right. like I own your podcast. Yeah, that's you, what it's you, like here, too. Yeah, you do agree to hang for a year, but it's it's more like a co-op. Like, we're getting all the eyeballs on the same page, hyping each other's things, and right, blah, blah, right. blah. Just basically doing what all the business guys are going to do without without raping anybody. That, that's that's our, what we're trying no, to do. There's some podcast contracts that are fucking crazy where it's just like, you know, if you ever have an idea, even if you don't write it down, it's ours. It's ours. <laughs> yeah. Any voices you use. Yeah. And all, you all do that a goofy shit. voice. We um, have software that determines that that's a character. And, that, and that's that's the standard. That's the standard <laughs> thing. Like when, when Conan left NBC. Yeah, he had to leave like the master bang bear, all that shit that the writers came yeah. up with. But they did it under that umbrella, and they own, they own all of that. Yeah, and uh, yeah. It but listen, why don't you date a veterinarian? That probably is probably smell like work. <laughs> Ugh, they smell like cat shit. They come home smelling like some diseased bird. Ugh. He gets some weird fungus. <laughs> I don't know. There's there. I was like, I've been talking about an architect. Like those are in movies. Always, it's an architect. I feel like that the male. That's a manly job. That's a good one. You got your big yeah. drawing room. Like it's creative, but it's mathematical. You know, I feel like steady. Maybe someone techie could, could be good. You, you could build you some a walk-in closet, or at least design it. Mm -hmm. I you like know? guys who can build stuff. Hands-on. I don't know. You, I'm doomed. You like you like pies. Well, yeah. let's, let's put it out here. Let's let's build your whole profile. But what I need is like someone who has like 25 references of mutual friends. <laughs> I can't just date a random person off this podcast. Why don't you go on uh dating sites? Yeah, I haven't I haven't met anybody either. Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I can't do it. I I believe in the magic of the universe. I would do it. I would do it. No, you wouldn't. As a I comedian would. in the public eye, you would then go on a dating site and then oh, I can't do that anymore. I don't think you could. What if I had a mustache and nobody recognized me? <laughs> They're like, uh, did you see this picture of Bill Burr with a mustache on this date on Cupid? Okay, Cupid. I just think that those sites that totally make sense. Like if you're really ready, you're ready to settle down, you want to meet somebody and you just can f just that sounds rifle, too through, pragmatic. rifle through the fucking population. Uh, that does not sound out, romantic. Out, out, Possible. Out, out, in, out. <laughs> Maybe. No, out, haven't out, you? First of all, it. you have to Dude, have It's like chemistry. having your own fucking reality show, like Flavor of Love, except it's you. You know, and you got all these bitches coming in, right? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> oh, God. I don't know. I think that sounds really Why stressful. Why don't you go to the ice skating rink? Ugh. There's always romance at a skating rink. You got on your Ew, mittens. I do not maybe, skate. Maybe you fall down and somebody catches you. No, no, I'm not that girl. safe in his arms. <laughs> no. Lifts you up. Next thing I you would know. like to be feeling safe in someone's arms, but I don't skate. It's never been. I never like grew up and went to the skating rink. I cannot ice skate. Yeah. I didn't have That's like. Because you're from hella California. Yeah. Right? That's too bad. It's a great. Uh, it's a good time. Do you, you ski? No, I'm scared of skiing. You, do you roller skate? You roller mm -mm. skate? No, right? no, no, no. I played volleyball. Guys. I played soccer. I played basketball. Volleyball's good. I won a dunk competition in high school. Oh, you did? Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> Take up from the foul line. Oh, back when you had the cornrows? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, let's take one call. Oh, let's, let's do it. Call from. We were actually going to have a nice moment there, and you ran to the phone calls. That's Hi, I'm running from intimacy. Who is this? <laughs> <laughs> this is Mike. 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 Mike, what's up? Uh, not too much. I got a topic, if you'd like. Okay. A couple weeks ago, you were talking about negging and uh, pickup artists and things. Right. And uh, how they're just, nobody can seem to understand them. Well, they think of women as objects. Mm-hmm. Completely. 
No, I was like saying he, I don't understand why people would respond positively to negging. Like, if a guy was like, that's an ugly sweater, I'm not like, oh, we should hang out. Like, I love that you're putting me down. I just don't understand why that works on people. I can I can jump in there. <laughs> okay. No, there's an art to it. What? You don't just go, that's an ugly sweater. You got a stupid face. You want to go out? Yeah. You don't do it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Walk it's, up to someone. You got a stupid face. Yeah, no, it's it's more playful. <laughs> Look, you know what it is. It's like they just. If you're a beautiful woman, it's like you're just surrounded by yes men all day, right? right? And, well, it, then, and that they're used yeah. to hearing that. So if you come at them another way, like my brother one time, he picked up a girl. I remember he walked up to her and goes, "You know what? You're the second most beautiful woman in this this bar, something like that." And she laughed. She immediately smiled and said, "Why? Who's better looking than me?" And he pointed to some other girl, started breaking her down why she was so much prettier. But Ew. she was laughing. I would hate nah, that. No, nah, it was funny. Are they now married? It was funny. No, but I mean, he got in there. <laughs> you know something? But that has nothing to do with that technique. That just has to do with, like, you. What do you mean? Like, you're a girl. I would have no idea how to approach you. <laughs> that's like, probably that's why just, I'm going absolutely, to be. I, I would be sitting there going, like, I don't know. I would, am I going well? Should I bail? Does she like me? Is she gonna have to put, smash a glass over my head? Like, like you, you sit there. Oh, do you have the glass sound effect? Here we go. Oh! <laughs> Man, you know, you're really you know, making you know me feel like a fraud with my whole format, you know Bill. Funny? Yeah, because all of this right here. Mm -hmm. If I was your therapist, these sound effects, <laughs> these don't, phone don't calls, kill my show. All of this is just another wall that you're yes. putting up between you. Now that you have a guest, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And this is what you do. Like I'm I press kind of one button. Huh? You should hear how frequently these get hit when you're not in the room. And I'm just doing it's it to not, be ironic because I know you, you do don't it. respect it's when, it. When you do it. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. No, but I don't know if um I, I definitely think teasing is fun and, and like making fun of each other and stuff. Uh my aunt said something interesting to me one time about where where I was like being teasing or playful or combative with a guy that I liked and she's like, You're teaching him to be mean to you. Uh yeah, I don't know. You'd have to t t talk to another woman about that. I don't know. That actually sounds interesting. I have no idea. Do you think it's like part of love that's functional? Because you've been in a relationship for a long yeah. time. Like, do you think like teasing and stuff like that is a healthy part oh, of it? Oh, yeah, definitely. Or just doing stupid shit. Yeah, because see what I tried like, to I do. Invented a, I invented a, a, a sitcom that starred my girl and, and our dog. Mm -hmm. And I just wrote some hacky review of it. Uh, it was a great mid-season replacement, and it was just completely stupid. And I, but I went all out. It actually, I, I could have it in Entertainment Weekly. It was that well written, and it was ridiculous. It made her laugh her ass off. Cause yeah, it was, it was really stupid. Yeah, but like shit like that. If you don't do that, it's it's fucking over. Right. You're just sitting there like it's literally. But then like, can it also be too much? Where like you're joking and you say something too mean and you hurt someone's feelings. Oh yeah. You gotta have Neo on here sometime. If you had Neo on here, like she, yeah, she would. She would. Yeah, she trashed me. Like she, she <laughs> says on a regular basis, like, uh, "Are you doing stand up tonight?" <laughs> like hoping I'm gonna leave. Yeah, trying to get you out of the house. No, I got that stand up disease where TV is interactive. I don't just sit there with right. my fucking mouth hanging open if I'm watching it, unless right. unless it's just some <laughs> epic shit about I don't know some animal or uh, uh, mob guy or anything like that. Like, yeah. People get mad that that you talk during a reality show. It, I just I don't understand. Like, what did you miss? Yeah. What did you really miss? I so? went to a movie last night with my fr uh, with Moshe, and we were sitting there, and this lady was laughing at every scripted. Is it joke. Moshe or Moesha? Moshe. It's Moshe. <laughs> yeah. Is that like Demi and I, Demi? I call him Moesha <laughs> because of Brandy, you know, and stuff. But he doesn't. Like oh, it's a he. Oh, yeah, okay. It's All a right. guy. No, no disrespect. You don't know Moshe Kasher? He's very funny. I imagine I do. Mm. <laughs> no, there's a zillion fucking people. I don't yeah. know. In the world, yeah. Um, there's, there's actually billions. But this, I don't see, I which wouldn't know. Which brings us to the guns and the powdered food. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot this, the end of this list. Right. You basically, you want a generator, you want a gun, and you want some sort of food, and then you don't want your neighbors to know that you have it. That's mm. the thing. Because fucking idiots... You know, half these fucking people who get whacked, 
is because mm-hmm. they're always flashing what they have. Right. So basically, if you still have power and you still have food during the apocalypse, the last thing you want to do is have your fucking lights on at night so everybody <laughs> now knows. Now I know. I'm going straight to your house yeah, if you anything don't. No, goes I don't, down. I don't have any of that shit. And the lights will be off. I'll be <laughs> tapping on the window. I know you got food. Bill. 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 Yeah. You and Neil will be in the bed just like hiding under the blankets. I'm like, Bill, come on. I'd let you in. You would? Yeah, I'd let you. In the apocalypse? Small. You don't look like you eat that much. <laughs> you didn't see me with my <laughs> we, pie this we, morning. We keep, we keep, oh, that's right. You little girls always eat the most. So they're throwing I down. I love burgers. <laughs> that's what like skinny women. I actually love burgers and fries. <laughs> I eat it all the time. I was being so bad. Yeah, I have high cholesterol, though, so I'm paying internally. I'll be dead in a year if I keep eating like this. No, I got to turn it around, too. I like everything that kills you. Yeah. Fucked Whiskey, up. steak, cigars. I mean, I, everything. Fuck it. Everything that that makes it awesome. I feel like if you watch Mad Men or if you like look at Europeans, it seems like they're all just completely uh, immune to all those things. Like no, they they're just... not. No, you, if you go over to Europe, that's a big fucking myth that those people over there are in any better shape. Oh, well, there's a lot of them over there. Look like they've never done a push up in their life. They still have like those little boy straight arms. Yeah. And then, but then they got that fish and chips torso. There's a lot of that. Now they're not like, like um, as many obese. But there's a lot. Of, I was surprised. There's a lot of fat fucks over there. If you go to the Scandinavian though, <laughs> that's your review of Europe. Yeah. If you go to. His, I stand by it too. If you go, if you go through Scandinavia, though, what's hilarious about them is how like that lives up to the hype. Beautiful people, yeah, and they're fucking tall as hell. Scandinavians like, are the ones who trigger my insecurity the most of all. Like, what was that guest model, um, C- Claudia Schiffer? Like, right. that's what I always wished I looked like. The exact opposite. I was never opposite. into her. I was, really? I was more into like I was always more into like brunettes. Some sort of tan. I never. I was already pasty. Uh, like hmm. I already had that. You know. What I, mean? I didn't. I didn't want. I already had what Claudia had. <laughs> <laughs> no. The. Uh, you know. It's funny when uh, I was. I was in uh, somewhere over there, Oslo or fucking Stockholm. I can't yeah. remember where the hell I was. But they're so fucking tall over there. There's like they have like kids. They're like 12 years old. And like boys, and their voices haven't changed yet, and they're yeah. almost as tall as I am. So like they're running around like, hey, <laughs> he's fucking high pitched voices, <laughs> and they're fucking almost six feet tall. It was hilarious. And then they're like they're two gigantic like Sasquatch parents, but they're yeah. not like they're not like thick. They're like really skinny. Mm-hmm. The first time I went to uh, uh, Stockholm, um, the people in Stockholm, it, it's almost like they keep their brunettes and their 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 <laughs> less people. They keep them outside the city. If you jump on the subway, that's where you see them. You start seeing Middle Eastern people and stuff. But it's almost like they're not allowed in the city itself. But it, I was just walking down the street. I was, they were so good looking. It was ridiculous. I was even pointing to guys. I was saying to me, I was going, "Look at that guy. Yeah, look at him." I don't think I. I don't know if I like Nordic men as much though. I like brunettes too. I've always, uh, yeah, I've always liked. Yeah, when I used to watch Charlie's Angels. Like, I liked I liked Kate Jackson. Yeah, I guess she had more black hair. Was she Asian? Yeah, but I don't. Like do you have a lot of blonde hair. friends? No, it usually changes after a while. Like blonde people don't. It's weird. You don't see that many blonde people. But they're always talking about how redheads are going to die out. You know, that's like a big, another big like classic. <laughs> like, it's oh, an, because it's another people classic. don't mate with you guys. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> that's hilarious. That's hilarious. <laughs> Uh, I mis- honestly recessive. thought that's what you mean. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's saying it's a it's a recessive gene, and they're blo- and it's so fucking yeah. funny when something like that gets into the ointment. The <laughs> amount of fucking morons yeah. out there. You know, you have no medical background. You just like. The amount of information that's out there that's just somebody <laughs> said it and then everybody's just repeating it. Yes. It's, it's, it's fucking astounding. Yeah. And, I've, and, I, and, and the only reason why I noticed, noticed that because I catch myself doing it all the time. Yeah. I, and I became really aware of it when I became a comedian. And all of a sudden, I wasn't just some asshole in a bar. I was standing on a stage right. with a microphone. Making proclamations. Like, yeah, like, attention, please. And then I, and I actually started. <laughs> you start your jokes like that. Attention, please. Attention, usually. please. Here comes another one. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this as much as I do. <laughs> what is the deal? Um, I have a couple announcements. <laughs> a couple announcements I want to make. <laughs> get out of the way before we get going here. That's the most such a downer, like camp or school. Anytime you hear people go, okay, we have a couple announcements to get through. Yeah, everybody just tunes out. That's, that's actually the vibe a great of way my to, stand-up. That's a great way to, like, you know, get out of if you're bombing. 
Uh, is do what? You just say that there are announcements. Oh, the yeah. Club, one, a couple things about the club. Tip your waist staff or what? Yeah, a couple things about the president. Hey, what's up with Obama? And you just, you yeah. just you delivered it like, like, a, like, a, like an announcement. I like it when people go to like they're doing a sermon. Like I've seen people like crush one night and the next night get nothing and they just turn it into a real philosophical like oh, they try to exploration. Bail. You know, like, yeah, life is crazy. You know, it's a trip, like where they were getting a huge yeah. laugh before. <laughs> so what do you do? What do you do for a living? Yeah. Hey, how's the election going? Let's see. Uh, who, who, uh, Romney, oh. Romney's ahead. Romney's ahead? Told you. Votes by, like, like 13 right now. by how many votes? By like 13 electoral votes. Right now. Oh, man. Do you, now, do you actually think they count them? Like they literally count? I have no idea. I feel like anything I'll say is going to sound so stupid about politics. That's why I really try I to just, just... I just love the, the whole voting process is so funny to me. Like you just walk in, you go, you hit the whole little push through the Can little Can I things. say I really found it confusing? Yeah, they make it confusing on purpose. That's another thing I don't like. And what both of them, both the questions, <laughs> yes or no, will be worded unbelievably yeah. confusing. It's like, yeah. why are they allowed to do that? I don't know. And I don't know how like anyone does it accurately and and like i walked in there i'm like i feel like i'm pretty smart as no I'm you i have the book in the car you have to actually get another book yeah that tells you like that that every election there's always that that big cheat, one cheat. and it's like yes means no right and no means yes right they always do that Just uh, like, and there's so much shit that if uh, i i have a problem with i have a problem with the fact that during that fucking hurricane that when those people are dealing with they just lost the house or they don't have any power or anything that you can then raise the price of gas. Yeah. Like, to me, that's treasonous behavior. You're literally fucking over another countryman in, in the, their, their most vulnerable point. Yeah. Did I just make a statement there? Was that a joke? <laughs> or was that, an, that was an announcement. <laughs> I got to go stand in line and go fucking down there. and I don't know who I'm going to vote for. You don't? No. You're undecided? Yeah, well, I, I don't vote for the two main guys. Those guys. Well, so you'll be voting for Roseanne th Barr. Th those guys don't. Uh, they won't be. Roseanne, they're, not Barr. They're, they're, just Roseanne. There's other options. Hmm? There's other options. You really don't vote uh, for why, the. Why? Cause, well, I'm always just amazed because I. Like, and I'm, I'm amazed at people who say that that's throwing away a vote because you just want to win. Don't you don't you want to encourage people who actually say like, hey, these bankers, uh, they should probably go to jail. What do you think? You know what? I feel panicked about Romney just because of the women's issues. Like, I do feel like whatever the concept of throwing away a vote, yes, in an ideal world, your vote could make a change if you vote out of the main I just want to parties. encourage other people. But what if you encouraging other people means a rape victim has to keep her baby? I do that? By, I mean, I don't know. Does L.A. even matter? Not really. Right. Well, first of all, I've lived in New York and I've lived in L.A. and yeah. I could literally write in Hitler, and they're not going right. to win. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like it doesn't it's matter. It's so here. left. It's so left. It's not going to. It's not going to matter. Right. Here, but I guess the, the state, you know, Bakersfield and other places, they're going to they're going to vote for Romney. I mean, I I don't I don't even know what Mitt Romney's running mate is. I tapped out in 2004. When my choices were two white guys who both went to Yale and both were members of the Skull and Bones. Right. It's the same fucking guy in my world. Right. They're both rich fucking guys. You but know? you weren't amped when Obama came onto the scene? No, I, would, I, I for half a second, I, I fell into it like, yeah, he's going to do something. You can't. Yeah. Right now, I think at this point, I don't think anybody could, could can do anything. I don't think that yeah. until we get like manufacturing back in this country... We have something to export. I would actually legalize weed and just make the, the best weed possible because you know we could, right? And then, and then take that money and try to knock down some of the debt. We're trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars in debt. Somebody, <laughs> somebody in four years... I'm just staring at you blankly. Oh, you don't care? <laughs> no, I do, but I just don't well, have no, anything in, to in, add because I know four, nothing. In four years, you can, how do you turn that around in four years? You can't do right. it. So now this poor bastard, if Mitt Romney gets in, then it's going to be, they, they just pass this endless bag of shit to the next guy. He's just somebody to yell at. He's right. somebody to get mad at. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I find it weird, though, that people get upset or I understand getting upset that your taxes are raised. But to sit there and, and be like, can you believe this? It's like, yeah, we've had two two wars for right. 10 straight years. That, right. That's, that's going to cost money. At some point, the check's going to hit the table. Right. 
And you, you know how that works, and fucking shit runs downhill. Yeah. A lot of uh, potholes in I, Los I, Angeles. I admit, you should have trashed me 10 <laughs> minutes ago. I'm, I'm, I'm so in over my head with this. I'm not it's, smart you know, enough you know, to trash I'm you. I'm not either. It's too, it's, it's too big. It's too fucking big to put on one guy's shoulder and just be like, yeah. if you vote for this guy, he's going right. to do this. If well, you that's vote for why that the guy, debates are stupid, where it's like people are like, families are important. And everyone's like, well, he seems like he thinks family's important. I'm like, well, they're both saying that. And it doesn't mean anything. I'll tell you, you know what's stupid is this fucking Abraham Lincoln movie that's coming out. <laughs> and everybody's flipping out at what a great job the actors do. And it's like, there's no <laughs> film footage or audio tape of Lincoln. His beard he, is very he, Lincoln. -y. He, could, he could have a helium voice for all you know. Dude, he sounds just like him. That's Daniel he's... Day Lewis, right? Is that who that is? Isn't it? Oh yeah, that guy's that guy's the shit. All right, you I'm love gonna, him because I was going to say I have a no, joke about how men love Daniel Day Lewis so much, and I was like no, so I, surprised I, if you were coming down against him. I know I like there would be blood. Of uh, course, my, my left my left foot. I don't want to watch somebody drooling. For <laughs> I don't want to see that. that. I don't want to see that. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like it's like when they're showing the, the after a hurricane. I don't want to see people's misery. Just tell me where I have to donate. If there's right. a benefit, I'll go do it. I don't want to see somebody. I lost everything. I can't find my, I can't find my dog. I mean, I'm not going to sit there and watch it. It's fucking horrible. It's horrible. I get it. I know what happens in a hurricane. Awful things. What can I do to help? I don't want to sit there and have. I don't need you to reconfirm what I already know. I think I could watch you doing a person crying for some time and not be bored of that. Oh, okay. All I right. Like, I like well, you should, if you're going to listen to a podcast, I actually already trashed that new Denzel movie. Oh, I just watched it last night. And I'm saying it's a bad movie. It's just the most yeah. ridiculous thing ever that if somebody was hammered and they were flying a plane upside down and they landed it, that dude would be a hero. Yeah. That's it. It's over. I don't give a fuck if you were on acid. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's like that baseball like who, player who, who played on acid, right? Uh, through and the perfect he, game. And yeah. Yeah, on acid. So there's a lot of people who are very high performing uh, on under acid. the influence. Like weed. Weed makes some people focus. Whereas it makes me fall apart. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I, yeah. I, I can't get all paranoid. Yeah. I get I get super paranoid. But I, I, don't like, I don't like smoking. Well, I know you have to go. Jesus. I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm not saying that in the way of like people are like, "Well, I'll let you go." But I'm this saying it because you, you said you had to go. You know, ten minutes ago to go vote. I thought oh you wanted God. to get out of here. Wait, no, it's six thirty. It's six thirty. Not what does that mean? That's not seven. Well, the polls close close at what time? At eight o'clock. Okay. I've never not voted in an election. You want to hear right. everybody who I've voted for? And my history, sure. so all you guys can trust uh, me. I wish I knew more about history so I could make a joke right now. I don't even know an old president right, to reference. in 88, <laughs> before I got in this business, I voted for Bush. Wow. I voted for Bush over Dukakis. I totally fell into it when that guy stuck his head through the tank hole and was sitting there, you know. I don't like know idiot. what you're talking about. All right. Well, but I loved young. Kitty Dukakis as a character. Drinking, rubbing alcohol. I, I've I been a big, it. like, I'm, I've always been the person who voted for Ross Perot. Oh, I liked or, uh, Perot. Uh, yeah, I, looking back, I probably shouldn't have voted for him. Uh, <laughs> he was a character. He was a character. And I don't fault people who voted for George W. the first time. The second time, I don't know what the fuck you were expecting. <laughs> right. 2000, you didn't know what he was. I mean, I didn't give a fuck, fuck when he got elected, but by the second time around, you're like, really? Another four years of this? But you're not libertarian. Uh, no, I'm not, I don't, I know, I'm, I'm definitely left. I'm definitely left. I'm fucked. Like, if you're a liberal and you start arguing liberal arguments, I'll argue Republican. Right. And then it's the other way around, I'll argue the other way. I think I'm just an asshole. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what it is? What's making me become more Republican is living in this fucking city oh. because I think these people are they're so goddamn liberal out here that they, they're literally the Fox News version of right. the left right well and you know what? absolute and they speak in absolutes which I do all the time of course I'm so full of shit <laughs> <laughs> how dare they I go on a you know tirade this is a problem I'm having like I had I've, I've woken up to how full of shit I am and I, I, I can't I speak been hard to complete ideas right because i just keep yeah. thinking you don't you don't know what you're that's talking very about jewish. you're not reading you don't know any of this shit that's a very jewish affectation i feel like just self-doubt that breaks you down in the middle of i just want to say that i'm voting for mythany or, or i want to have this actual <laughs> Myth, myth mythology if i actually know what his real name is those people will, will believe it let's see i think it is just myth i don't know if it's short for anything 
Is there some? Anyway, s- I hate a lot of liberals. Some sort of Bill, red, white, and blue. William. Yes. I dislike a lot of liberals. I grew up in the Bay Area where they could be extremely irritating, and so I dislike them and make fun of them. And I, to the point where I thought I might be libertarian. And then I was saying that to my brother and he just like laughed in my face and he's like, do you believe this? I was like, no. He's like, do you believe this? No. He's like, y- yeah. you just went down the line. He's like, you're a liberal. <laughs> like I thought I was a real, you know, I out think there. I'm basically liberal, but I don't like people. So yeah, even if I meet a liberal, well, I, don't, I, I don't want to hear what you have to say. And I'm going to argue with you. Liberals need to be rebranded. Liberals are not cool. You know, like, they don't have, like, strong opinions and edgy... Oh, here it is. His name is Willard... (laughs) Really? Willard Mitt Romney. No wonder he goes by Mitt... How does our president go by a nickname? I don't feel like that should be allowed. No, Mitt Mitt is his his middle name. Yeah, you can't go by your middle name. He should have to be going by Willard Romney. I want to see his birth certificate. Um... (laughs) Okay, Willard Mitt Romney. This is what I'm going to do before I go vote. I'm going to read his Wikipedia page. He was born <laughs> March 12, 1947. Oh, my God. i got to get my shit together. This guy's almost as old as... He's, he's an American, <laughs> That's so funny that an you're American comparing American businessman yourself. and the Republican nominee, raised in Bloomfield. There's got to be something about his fucking name. Oh, here it is. Raised in Bloomfield, Michigan. Raised by his p- parents, Lenore and George W. Romney. Weird. Named after... Yeah, that's like Francis Ford Romney. Or maybe it isn't. Well, by could now, he could be seriously? president. If you were going home to be bedded and by, put that on? By, by your sire from Gelson's, and he went to put that on. Yes. You would be fine with that. When I was in college, I was into ecstasy, and I was into like house music and drum and bass, and I would have sex on ecstasy to sexy music. <laughs> <laughs> You know what's funny? Just so in the you know future, who you're dealing with. In the future, somebody who's running for president is going to have to come clean with that when this yeah. generation gets old enough. Yeah, exactly. What exactly did you do in college when I was in college? I was a raver. I used to take ecstasy. Everything you just said there. Really? And, and how many... Uh, now, instead of having candle lights, did you guys just, just keep moving your glow sticks? <laughs> well, he didn't have a... He was a break dancer, this one guy that I was seeing. And we would go to Motel 6s because he lived with his mom. Did you guys have a matching track suits and work on routines together? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> That's like more 80s or something. Oh, it is? Yeah, I don't know. I'm fucking old. <laughs> I have no idea what you children do. Yeah, but it was, a, it was a fun time. It was a fun time in your life. All right, well, I have to go vote. I have to go cram. I'm basically going to vote this time like the way I used to you know, study for exams in uh, college, which is the last second on the train. All right. Well, listen, best of luck on your vote. By this time, the time that this airs, it's already going to be Obama who's president. Is it going to be Barack or Willard? Hopefully Why is he Barack. Going by Will? Things are getting weird that that's the two candidates. Will Romney. Will, yeah. Mitt. Mitt is, is I don't think that should be allowed. Mitt. Anyway, listen, I really want to say in all genuine honesty, I really I you appreciate you. I yeah, know you I appreciate do. me. You do. I do. You do. Okay. I really do. That's all right. I got right to the heart of it. <laughs> so you didn't have to be weird. No sound effects or anything. And I'm going to give you a hug, too, before I go. Okay. All right. Thank you for having me. Thanks And for I'm coming. sorry to the callers if I was rude to you. All We're right? going to hug. I'll, if I'll I was keep a smug this, bitch. I'll keep this recording during the hug, and then I'll play the signature sound effect that, <laughs> that signifies the end See of the that? show. See that? This is the wall up. She can't even give me a hug. A, nice, a good friend. A no, but you got you to do it on the show. No. Gotta, come on, bring it in. Bring it in. A nice, warm holiday <laughs> hug. There it is. There it is. See that? That wasn't All that right. hot. Now. All right. All right. We'll start. <laughs>